University of Michigan, uh, I think most of you are aware of uh, the story behind that. Uh, there was a patient that got diagnosed and if you get enough people get out cancer, eventually you get someone gets out cancer that's actually got a ton of money. And uh, so um, someone did get diagnosed that has a ton of money and they wanted to do whatever they could to accelerate research as quickly as possible. They made a very substantial grant around about $9 million to the University of Michigan. Uh, University of Michigan didn't have a super strong uh, reputation in the ALK, but they're certainly putting together a strong reputation in the ALK in a big hurry now. And so we have uh, Dr. Sharish Gadgil, Dr. Angel Chin, and Dr. Sophia Mariah, uh, not physically in person here with us, but in spirit. And they're going to be talking with us a little bit about uh, everything that they've been working on. So uh, we're really excited to hear about the progress that you've made. I know it was something where, you, you know, the, 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 you got made the promise and then you had to try to put it into action as quickly as possible, which is not easy, but everything I've heard, you're doing an amazing job and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, can everyone hear me? Just want to do a sound check. Thank you. Um, well, um, wherever we are right now, uh, I have to first thank altpositive.org and uh, Dr. Shirish Gadgil, uh, who joins us as a team member. Um, if it weren't for the team spirit of this organization, uh, the worldwide network that you have assembled, the second opinion program. I mean, every time I hear about the new things that Al Positive is doing, I am more in awe of what a huge difference you are making. And you have made a huge difference to our program. Uh, we are incredibly excited about uh, the patients reaching out to us about all the connections that we have made, about samples we have collected. So uh, I, we owe a huge debt of gratitude and I know this will continue to increase to altpositive.org and to all the other centers of excellence in ALK. And as many as there are, there aren't that many and every single one of them that we've reached out has been incredibly collaborative. So that's the number one thing I wanna show. And um, so I'm, I'm sharing the screen, right? Um, there is, uh... okay, I just have to- you should, be, uh, you should be good to go. I should be good to go, okay. Um, I'm trying to, um, hmm. no, I don't know exactly. Um, okay, here it is, okay. Very good. There we go. I, hope, good. I hope you can all see it, but it's at the end. So let me escape that. <laughs> I don't know why I jumped to the end. This, is the, is, the end this is this is the first slide. Okay, so this is a team science collaborative program to accelerate discoveries for patients. It's as simple as that. Um, I know you are all working very hard for patients. We are completely focused on understanding what is happening to the patient right now. And how can we make that life better? How can we uh, make the remission longer? How can we make uh, the remission happen? Um, how can we treat at every stage of the patient's trajectory? Uh, how can we treat them in the best possible way right now? How can we learn from each patient? Seems like simple, right? But a lot of what we do is really not based on the personalized profile of the patient beyond relatively simple genomics approaches where we detect a variant, an ALK fusion variant, whichever one it is, one, two, three, five, and that's about it. Uh, we may look at other mutations later on, mostly in ALK, maybe other genes, a very small repertoire of understanding the wealth of information the patient and the tumor contain. So that is the spirit of this initiative. And we didn't get the money and then put the initiative together. 
we wouldn't have gotten the money if we didn't have the initiative together first. So the, the opening was made, but I just wanted to clarify that we put this program together and our benefactor uh, portrayed here, Judy Tam, um, understood that that's, it was in fact her vision. So um, let me advance this slide in a manner that I can advise it. So what are our goals? We aim to develop and validate real-time drug testing platform in out positive non-small cell lung cancer. And by the way, we've done this with breast cancer, with bladder cancer, with brain metastasis from all cancers, including many lung cancer brain metastasis. So this is not new for us. We already had developed this platform, which hadn't applied it to ALK disease in particular. And so now we perfected this for ALK disease in the last six months and it's working fantastic. Uh, we haven't uh, missed a single sample in terms of being able to test it. And that's something I really cannot say for any other tumor type. Uh, so we wanna understand the mechanisms of resistance to therapies. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, this has been done by other groups. Well, no, it hasn't been done for you and for you and for you. It has been done in general for the 20 or 30 maybe patients that they have studied and they have only really studied at the mutational level. So uh, the groups that have been working on this are fantastic groups and they're making great progress and we are not duplicating anything they are trying to do. We are adding to it by a, a position that every patient has a multitude of resistance pathways that are contributing to this disease being increasingly more resistant to treatment. If it were just ALK mutations, we would have cured ALK-driven non-small cell lung cancer. If that was the only or main mechanism of resistance, we would have cured this disease. The way we largely cure or incredibly well control CML, I believe ALK-positive non-small cell lung cancer is like the CML of, um, of solid tumors. And we have to think in different ways about how to cure this disease. We need to determine a lot of fundamental processes about how, the, how this fusion causes cancer to begin with. So we are very keen to determine the cell of origin, definitively proven, um, and also what are the other cells around the cell of origin of the cancer, how are they contributing to the cancer developing? And we want to open clinical trials with new drugs, given that the great, this is a great area of unmet need and uh, there are tremendous uh, opportunities and I echo what everyone else said in terms of if you can be in a clinical trial, please be counted, be in a clinical trial, in a tissue procurement trial, in any kind of trial where you can enhance your life and the life of everyone else connected to you. Because remember, genetically, you are, by participating in clinical trials, you are primarily benefiting yourself and those genetically closest to you, and that's your immediate family, and then society at large. So I'd like to now pass it to um, Dr. Angel Chin, our lead clinician, who will explain to you the rest of uh, the slides. Go ahead, Angel. I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. We can't, can't hear you. anything from you, Dr. Chin. Can't hear you, Angel. Stop sharing the screen, you Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Huh. We're, we're, we're good now. Okay. All right. So I apologize for that. So um, uh, so this is a, a graphic that details how we obtain patient material for our study. Um, so we are um, asking for um, patient material at the time of an operation, a biopsy, or any fluid that may be um, uh, withdrawn. And we take that sample and we kind of uh, do all the different testing that's pictured here. So first we take some of the tumor and we do um, real-time drug testing 
uh, on the tumor samples, and that will allow us to kind of understand based on the patient's tumor sample if the drugs may be effective. And the way we determine that panel of drugs is based on the clinical history, as well as any sequencing data that the patient um, has already had. We're also aiming to do real lifetime sequencing at the same time. So if you know, we have adequate um, samples, we wanna do sequencing at that same time, which can also inform us the panel of drugs that we would want to use. We are also hoping to develop patient-derived xenograph uh, models can you go back a slide, Sophia? Um, to uh, understand, to derive more models, to be able to do different trials with drugs in, in mice. Uh, we're also working with medicinal chemists um, who are studying the different kind of uh, resistance mechanisms that we are seeing, and maybe developing new compounds against these specific resistance mechanisms. And then we're also hoping to understand how these cells are metastasizing, how they're traveling throughout the body um, by uh, study the circulating tumor cells, which are the CTC. Um, next slide. So, uh, so these are just some of our early findings from patients that we've rolled on our study. Um, we usually get these uh, findings within seven, five to seven days of, after receiving the sample. So the top, uh, we just named it ALK, one, so this is derived from a fluid from a patient, a pleurofusion. This patient had progressed on crizotinib, alectinib, and lorlatinib. Um, and on the, the way that this graph is, is drawn is, is quite easy. So green means that the cells are sensitive to the drug, meaning we are seeing cell death. Red means that the cells are insensitive to the drug, so all of these cells are surviving. Um, so if you look at the graph at the top, you'll see that the red uh, is there for electinib, lorlatinib, and crizotinib, which matches with this patient's uh, clinical history. And then you'll see that it, it showed some other interesting um, uh, uh, results for drugs like reprotrectinib or brigatinib, uh, at least based on our studies, it suggested the cells would be sensitive to these drugs. Um, if we look on the bottom, uh, this is from patient ALK2. This is a patient who actually had a surgical resection for an early stage non-small cell lung cancer. And because we're doing clinical trials in early stage lung cancer um, at University of Michigan, we went ahead and did obtain uh, NGS on this patient as well. And, he, and this patient was found to have an ALK fusion. Uh, so this patient has never received any ALK inhibitors, but interestingly enough, uh, this patient's drug testing also suggests that his tumor is resistant to some of the drugs that we would think about, crizotinib, electinib, and lorlatinib, uh, but again, maybe having sensitivity to other drugs like brigatinib and atrectinib. We don't understand why this is, uh, so again, since this is patient is treatment naive, so we're trying to work hard to understand what it is about this patient's fusion that makes uh, their drugs um, it makes her cancer resistant, but I think we've seen this all clinically where some patients simply do not have a long, um, uh, long term of, of benefit from their initial TKI. Next slide. So we have, as Dr. Mariva mentioned, evolving collaborations, both national and international. Uh, Dr. Gadio, who is here with us today um, at Henry Ford, he is definitely a thought leader um, in the world of ALK, he is both a collaborator and on our advisory board, which I'll let him talk about uh, next. We already have established collaborations going on right now with Vanderbilt, Northwestern, University of Colorado, uh, Massachusetts General, and, and other big centers as we are listing below. We've already had patients uh, send inquiries to us from across the world, um, Israel, the Philippines, and, and Europe, and we're really quickly understanding how we obtain, uh, you know, records and, and more importantly, patient samples from around the world. Um, I think the biggest uh, barrier to us right now is, is really some of the, um, oh, the uh, administrative work that needs to go down re regarding a material transfers agreement uh, to be able to have us obtain the patient samples or working on that as well. 
And um, we are also encouraging patients to always reach out to us um, if they're at all interested in participating in our research initiative. Next slide. So I, I think I will let Dr. Gadiel uh, talk to us about his role on the advisory board and, and how we're being held accountable for our study. Um, thanks, Angel. Um, I am, I don't know if I'm an advisor, I don't know if I'm a thought leader, I'm more of a cheerleader uh, on the sides. Um, I was privileged to be at University of Michigan for three years. Um, but then moved to Henry Ford for a variety of reasons and continue to have the privilege of uh, collaborating with these uh, wonderful researchers at uh, University of Michigan. And my role really is just to provide whatever input I can. Uh, and I am also looking at uh, referring patients uh, so that uh, we can collect uh, a lot of samples and generate data. I think the way I look at it, and, and as I said, I'm more of a cheerleader on the sidelines, but um, I look at it as this is an excellent way to understand better the cancer so that we can be more strategic in deciding what should be the sequence of events. Right now, we have a little bit of a cookie cutter approach where we start maybe with a drug like electinib or brigatinib and then go to lorlatinib and then maybe to chemotherapy. And of course, you've heard of a lot of different advances and you know, local consolidation therapy and all that, but potentially uh, this could be an additional tool uh, that may allow us to get even more personalized or provide even more personalized care where based on uh, very detailed features or analysis of the tumor, we can decide which is the best first drug uh, and maybe the second drug, so on and so forth. Um, so I'm uh, providing whatever uh, input and uh, guidance I can provide, but more importantly, I'm just privileged to be part of this wonderful team. So thank you. Then I think we have just one more slide. Um, Okay, um, so I, I don't know if everybody can see the slide, but uh, you know, again, we are looking for um, patients to please come join our study. We just really very much want to understand ALK, non-small cell lung cancer, and what we can do to you know, um, develop new therapeutic treatment options, new therapeutic strategies, and, and truly trying to understand the disease for every individual patient. So here is how to contact us. Um, we have a program manager, Stacy. Her email is right there. It is a secure email. Um, please feel free to send her an email and we are very much very active on our emails. Um, we have already been fortunate to consent and enroll 35 patients thus far in our initiative. We've been able to receive blood, uh, tissue and fluid from, from these patients. We also really encourage um, you to speak with your oncologist. We'd be happy to also connect with your oncologist to work together because as Dr. Mariva and Dr. Gadgio mentioned earlier, this is very much a collaborative effort um, and we need everyone working together to really help benefit our patients. And then I think at, at this point, that's really all we had. Again, we just want to thank Alk Positive. I've been incredibly uh, impressed at all that this organized organization does for all the patients um, and very, very thankful for their support. And we will take questions. Terrific. So we can take questions two ways. Uh, Nancy and her team can bring a microphone to you in the audience. Uh, so if you have a question, please put your hand up. Uh, and then for those that are remote, um, if you put a question into the chat, and the uh, Keith, the AV guy, is going to uh, text those to me. And hopefully I can read out any text that I get with screenshots. There are Hi. some questions already here, too. So we'd like to also answer the ones on the chat. Uh, we've got one live question here first. Is this working? Yeah. Hello. Hi, my name is Rick. Um, I am. I have a unique situation as in, I was first diagnosed in 2014. 
and it was just through a fish test. So I was elk, I've been through a bunch of TKIs, brain mats, blah, blah, blah. The problem I have is they're unable to get any material from a blood biopsy or a, I've done the CSF twice and they haven't been able to come up, which is great. I mean, less burden is good, but can they take the old sample from 2014 and run tests on it today to find out at least what that was? Or would that be useless because it's eight years ago? So I could answer some of that. It, it, we cannot do this. Drug testing requires that we... Um, Am I still on? Oh yeah. Um, the drug testing requires that um, the cells be alive. So the cells of the patient alive during surgery are alive in a lab five, seven days later. So the same cells that are causing your symptoms are the cells that we try to find out what kills them in the lab. So that's the spirit of our work. So that part of the work cannot be done, but I believe it is very useful if you are inclined to participate in this research study to be enrolled anyway, because as questions arise in mechanisms of resistance, we will need to tap into large numbers of, of uh, patients material archival, like you said, the one that you had in 2014 or 2016 when you were diagnosed, we can, we will be able to use that material if you are part of the study. Uh, right this minute, we are beginning to gather uh, also a diagnosis material because uh, we will have to test hypothesis on that. So thank you for your question. The other thing is, um, I hate to say this because we don't know the, the, the prognostic significance, but there are a lot of patients in all cancers, right? who have a negative CAT scan and a negative PET scan who have circulating tumor cells. And we are collecting circulating tumor cells. So if somebody is NED, but they have to have a blood draw for a checkup, we can collect uh, the circulating tumor cells and see if they are there. So far, we have never failed to see any. So we see lots of circulating tumor cells and we are trying to expand those cells to really understand because ultimately they are circulating. If the patient relapses, they probably played a role in the relapse. Terrific. Uh, we've got lots of questions coming in here. We won't have time for all of them, but I can get through a couple of them. Uh, there's two questions asked uh, by different people that are essentially the same question. I know them both. One's actually in Norway and one is in Washington state. Uh, the wording on one question is, how will the models developed at Michigan be shared across the ALK research community? And the other question is kind of related, will data and results be shared openly and timely for other oncologists? Uh, well, so they're kind of two different questions because one's talking about models and one's talking about the data and results. Yeah, so we are, we are dealing with both things. Uh, there is no, absolutely no question that we intend to, every model that we develop, uh, cell lines, everything, just as we are receiving from all these wonderful institutions, we will of course send back, uh, not just that uh, we are planning on sending back the data as we generated on the cell lines that Colorado or Mass General are sending us, they will see the data in real time pretty much at the same time that the group sees it at Michigan. We are completely committed to a team approach. We are not trying to compete. There is no territories here. So there is no question about the cell line data, the models that we generate. If we succeed in getting a lot of PDXs, they will be available to be sent out. Absolutely all of that. We are now through the process of figuring out with Dr. Chin's leadership, Dr. Gadgil, and all of our advisors. We're gonna have an advisory meeting in, in, in less than a month where we expect to really come to a decision about the question of how we share results in a clinical manner that is, is consistent with the regulatory constraints. Right now, our work is uh, research. It's done incredibly carefully, but it isn't what's called CLIA approved. 
So we cannot write a report and put it as part of the medical record as a clinical test. Uh, that doesn't mean the test is not valid. The test is valid, but it hasn't gone through the formal approval. And that is something that uh, requires certain constraints and we are working through that. So, but uh, the research is discussed with the patient's oncologist and that is allowed. And so we are um, as open as we can be, but we cannot produce right now a formal report. It's not like your NGS report. Terrific. Well, that's understood very clearly. Uh, one other question here. Would you be accepting material from outside of the United States? Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as uh, we have a material transfer agreement. So my advice is for any patients, if you are out there and you are interested in participation, we welcome you with open arms, but talk to your oncologist and see if they are willing to sponsor a material transfer agreement to just have it in place. I hope you never need another biopsy and you're cured, but if you do need another biopsy, then the material transfer agreement will make it such that we'll send the box and then the sample will come to us and there will be no problem. And, um, and from anywhere in the world, we have a refrigerated uh, box for 96 hours, so we can get it from anywhere in the world. But if there is no material transfer agreement, it's problematic. Okay, so everyone understands that then. Uh, we've got time for one more question. Is there anyone in the live audience that wants to ask a question? There's a question over, over. Hi, I'm just curious if you have availability to the drugs that are in trial, the valent TPX, et cetera. Angel, you want to take that? Yeah, so we've we've tried, um, and again, thanks to Alpha uh, Positive, we've been able to connect with some of these companies that have these new drugs, uh, either about to be in a clinical trial or already in a clinical trial. Um, so far, um, I think these companies are interested in perhaps collaborating in a scientific uh, manner, but not yet ready um, to share the drug. Um, some of it has to do with, I think, their, their legal team, uh, from what I understand. But I think we are very interested, and they are very interested in collaborating together to understand um, you know, for patients that do enroll on their study, what they're seeing in terms of, you know, response and resistance and using our research to help understand that. All right. We have, T we have TPX 0131 and we have the MS4078 and a few others. So if you can advocate for more, be available for research, it would be fantastic. Terrific. So uh, would everyone like to put their hands together and thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, rest assured we're all cheering every day for the success of your research. And uh, everybody here uh, is aware of it now. If they weren't already, I think they were before, but now they know more, more information and uh, Everyone can help by, uh, you know, if they've got samples, that if they know that they're going to get a biopsy, don't let the biopsy go to waste. If, if they've got extra that can go to research, liquid biopsies, anything like that's going to help.